California is home to some of the most amazing coasts in the United States and possibly the world. Of course, where there is this natural wonder, there is also science. This is the Scripps Institution of Oceanography and it's part of the University of California, San Diego. And here on my recent trip to San Diego with ARDC, I was able to go out on the pier and see for myself some of this science. Well, you might be thinking, ocean science, what has this got to do with radio? Well, as you will see, ocean science involves a fair bit of radio and wireless technology, and some of it, believe it or not, was directly related to radio propagation. And of course, we did get to see a cool California sunset, but I was a little disappointed, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Once you get the... Yeah, when you get... When you, yeah, when you come during the day and it's sunlight, once you get beyond the wave break, uh, especially at low tide, you look down and you'll see fish in the water, depending on the water clarity. You'll see a lot of leopard sharks. When, when uh, Jack and I do these tours for students, very often we'll see leopard sharks, they get all excited. So last Tuesday, yeah, I was here. I was here and there was a, a dolphin pond. They were all excited, uh, oh, super excited. They were right out here, uh, three or four of them. And this was to freshman high school students from High Tech High. So then this thing, this ob obelisk looking thing, this white thing, I know because I work with folks in my lab, it's called a sonometer. It measures uh, cloud bases, sensor uh -huh. laser pulse. Uh, okay. The altitudes of clouds, okay. what the vertical structure kind of looks like. Okay. So I mean, it's primarily used for uh, Aviation. You can see this at an airport. You know, the white, the, the white box. The, this white obelisk. Oh, that thing. Right. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so this is the first one. Yeah. This, one. But this is just some point to point. I asked them about it. <laughs> Maybe they don't want the university. To know it. So wait, what do you do here? What's your uh, So are you going to tell us about that? I will show you down there. Okay. A little bit about what I do. One of the things I wanted to do was to see a sunset, to actually see the sun go below the water, well, below the horizon. And I did get to see that. However, sometimes you see a green flash when the sun just dips below. Unfortunately, we did not see that. I don't know if the atmosphere was not favorable to that, but we never saw that. If you have any idea why this green flash happens and how we can see it, let me know. Put in the comments below. Well, we do know their atmosphere. Well, of course they're on. Yeah, we're at 11. Around 11 here. Okay, close enough. And then we have a transmitter. You can see, some days you can see it on a clear day, but in San Clemente, we have a uh, one of our, so another thing my group does is HF uh, high frequency radar. Oh, we have okay. a network. There's a network of uh, it's a NOAA, right? Um, that we can see operate uh, this network. And what we operate Southern California portion of the region. So we have sites. Northernmost one is at Data Point, which is south of the Yeah, we have some sites. Uh, 
hear them all over Asia. Yeah, that, yeah <laughs> yes, you can hear them on At the At least they're not in the yeah. handbands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we operate those and we do surface current mapping, which is useful right. for search and rescue, but also right. science. They're actually not much to look at. They're just verticals stuck above a box yeah. that says SIO. On it. Yep. Yeah. There's one, yeah, if you ever go by um, uh, Cardiff Beach up there, yeah, you'll that's see the one where we, the box. Yeah. 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 Yep. Thinking about, I mean, I think I've heard of people doing parasitic radar windows and just passively watching them. I mean, the waveforms are known, so yeah, it's known. Yeah, you could you could do your own passive radar with our yeah. system. Yeah. So, okay. what's the question you're trying to solve? So, we're trying to solve uh, very specifically. The specific question we're trying to solve is: Can we infer the presence of electromagnetic ducting uh, from well from a radio measurement? that doesn't require us to be in one place or to move a transmitter back and forth. So previously we've been taking a transmitter out on a boat, like we've taken our transmitter out on a boat out here and just gone 20 miles offshore, and we can see the signal strength decreasing. If there's ducting happening, we should see right uh, a higher signal to noise ratio at the far end based on what we predict for that range. Sure. And, but that's time consuming, right? We have to go and take the whole track do that so we're trying to do some things with uh, coded um, we'll have like, some pseudo random codes that we uh, modulate our signal with and we're decorrelating that over here and that allows us to only use about one watt uh, 60 miles away even with not a directional antenna we're still right. able to receive it here with a decent amount of SNR actually right. um, huh. and so we can actually see on a, on a warm day right like when there's warm air sitting on top of cool water we have uh, good ducting conditions saltwater coax it's called cool. yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it's, I mean, it affects all, a lot of different frequencies, mm -hmm. primarily microwave. Yeah. So you're trying to measure ducting without having to have a band. Actually, has, actually yeah. have a, yeah. 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 Okay. Some of these other things. Uh, Kevin, you said, do you know what that thing was that the Peter's thing used to be on there? But, uh, that's like, that was just a noise receiver from Peter Gertz up in Noise Lab. Um, so he was also looking at the room. So anything that moves like ocean waves creates noise. And so what he was doing is with his group was recording the noise created by waves as they were changing in size. Uh, and then what he's doing, he, he made the cover of Science Magazine. That's how. This is acoustic, cool. acoustic noise, or radio yes, noise. Acoustic. acoustic noise. So and we're then, we're we're blottoing it right now by talking. And then what he was. Uh, able to detect over time is being able to protect emerging wave or wave, me, emerging weather patterns. And so that's the nature of his work. Um, so if you go to noiselab.ucsd.edu, you can find out all about it. Most of it. It's not exactly user friendly in terms of how it's written. If you're a science type, then you, what is cool to you will be cool to you. Well, that was pretty cool, right? A real trip into ocean science. I'm glad you were along for the ride. And if you want to catch more videos, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. My friends, peace in 73.